good. First New York Comic Con for me. Yeah. 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 Usually well, just, a, usually just a San Diego one. Right? <laughs> I know, and I have to laugh that I asked you a long time ago about the COVID hair, and you were like, no, no, it's, it's not going to stay. It's well, not unfortunately, stay. Then, as I established myself as a character, and then I can't. Yeah. I can't cut it, so. <laughs> I love it. She's also, I I, oh, yeah, we I, may do not, too. I may not have a say in this. I like it. I love Big Sky, too. Thank you. Thank you. Jensen, just yes. when you thought you were done with Dean Winchester, they pull you back in. Yeah, <laughs> like the Godfather Three. Yep. Um, never done. You're never going to be done with. I'll Dean never be Winchester. done with Dean. Dean will never be done with me. Yeah. How did the show come about? And did you ever imagine the legacy of Supernatural it lasting 15 years? And now we're doing spinoffs. I mean, look, I, I didn't. I didn't think we'd last more than three seasons. Uh, and, and that, and I was excited about the success of that. Because you get more, you get anything more than three seasons of a show, and that's like that's a runaway success. Um, three networks. Yeah. What's that? Are we three networks or two? What? Well, WB, UPN, CW. It was like three networks. Oh uh, well, well, it, it was <laughs> yeah. It, it predated the, the the network that it ended on. That's changes. Sure. Um, so. The fact that we that we got to 15, I, nobody could have predicted that. Never in a million years. And uh, still very, very proud of, of every episode that we did. Very proud of every of every uh, season we completed. Um, and proud of every story we told. Um, you know, sure there were some that may not have hit as hard as some of the other storylines, but uh, but proud nonetheless. And then I think all of us, all of us that were really. It, uh, ingrained into the show and into this world, we we're always looking for a way to maybe expand. You know, we had we had bloodlines uh, as an opportunity that, that you know for whatever reason didn't go. We had uh, Wayward Sisters, which I thought you know I, we, we talked about, which I I thought that really should have gotten a shot. Uh, unfortunately, it did not. Um, and that was kind of what started this. When she and I were talking about you know the end is near. Because we went on uh, the end of season 15. the end of season fifteen was near. Uh, we we went on COVID break. We didn't know when we were going to be coming back. We were talking a lot about supernatural and what that world, what it's going to mean when this when the, the season ends and and where that would leave us and and it brought up you know how could we expand that? Way? What would that look like? And, and it just kept pointing back to uh, there's got to be a Winchester. Um, at least that's what we thought. We were like, well, it's, it, I feel like it's got to have a Winchester. Because then we talked about what if Castiel maybe went off, or, you know, Jack. Or, like, like the Garrison of Angels, yeah. Castiel's Garrison of Angels. But it's a lot more Misha. Um, uh, I think Misha would be like, no, I can't do that. It's too much. The voice, the voice. Yeah. Um, so so we, we started talking about, well, you know, early how mom meant dad. And what that we we we've got we've got waypoints that were laid out in the, in, on the mothership about what that look. Let's maybe find a way to fill in those blanks in a way that is unsuspecting. And that's and enter Robbie Thompson. Um, and that was that's that's kind of how it happened. And then we were so excited at the possibility of like, wait a second, could this work? Could this be the ticket? Could this be the expansion we were all kind of looking for and hoping for? And um, I hope it is. Oh, can I ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danielle, you have a little bit of experience with Supernatural. So you have a little bit of a fresher perspective. So what did you bring to this with your fresher perspective? What DNA? Uh, the 70s. Like, yeah. <laughs> the 70s. Um, no, it actually did exist there. That is canon. Yeah. I do know that. No, but I'm saying, um, you, you were like, well, that's... Was, Let's go back to the 70s. Let's tell that story. I'm excited about it. I do, I do love that period in time, and I also think it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of things that are happening now that are very similar. Um, so I think it's interesting to watch those parallels. But uh, for me, I kept driving home the love story of this, um, you know, because that's one thing I've heard him say over and over again that Supernatural is not loved because it's a show about monsters, it's a show about brothers. It was friends. the love story of two brothers, and, to be honest. Yeah, it really was. And, and it was the love that they shared and fought for. Yeah. This yeah. to us 
seemed like we're, we're, we're following another love story, and not just John this and This is Mary. a romance instead of a bromance, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but, there's, but there's other characters, and when you see the gang together, you know, you also see that love between Carlos and Lothica and, and Mary and those all those other relationships, um, which reminded us a lot of Supernatural, you know, because... You brought in Castiel and like the love that was created there, and all these different um, parts. So I think we have a lot of those uh, similarities. Yeah, it's it's a team that's not only fighting fighting the good fight, but also fighting for each other. Right. And and I think that was really important. And she kept she kept keeping that North Star. I kept north. the this. <laughs> like, but it's <laughs> gotta be a love story. It's yeah. just gotta be because yeah. you know they would get excited about the other things, and I'm like, yeah, but it's. It's about the love, remember? Mm -hmm. All right, one more. Let it, it go, follows right on that. So, okay. yes, I totally agree with you. The reason Supernatural was so incredible was because it was a love story. What's different between that, which was a platonic love story, which is so hard to find and so unique, and this, which is a more traditional romantic love story, how different was that when you were conceptualizing it? Well, I mean, obviously we know what what happens. We know where they right. end up. So we know that the, the, the romance worked. Um, but it is the getting there that is that uh, we really wanted to mess with. And that's where Robbie came in and, and said, well, it should be it should be not necessarily a forbidden love, but it should be a love that is fought against. It should be something that is I can't do this because it means that I'm gonna have to do this. I can't I can't bring you in, I can't get too close to you. So it's that it's that friction, that resistance, um, but still ultimately uh, uh, can't help but wanting to fight for each other or wanting to fight for one another or wanting to fight for that love. And, and I think that, that's, that that resistance and that struggle really gives us great story and, and gives us great character uh, uh, drive and motivation, not only individually, but also as a unit. And the sacrifices that people do for that kind of love. Right. Know? I mean, you do an all love, but the kind of sacrifices you will make for your children. And I mean, it's a different kind. It's a different kind of People that are parents out there, or even if you have a dog, because <laughs> Jensen would have laid down his life for our dog. <laughs> Just the same. So, anybody that's a parent knows that that is so powerful. So that unconditional I, love, yes. yeah. So, that is um, something I think we need to explore. That's a pretty good parallel. That was yeah. a great answer. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, guys. Guys.